Okay, let's get back to the three-dimensional box. We've now sort of seen what happens with the one-dimensional box and how you would go about counting up all the different modes. Um, and now let's get back to the three-dimensional box again where we have a, um, a cube, basically, of, of side length A. Okay. So in this case, the electric field inside the, um, inside the cube, inside the box, is, uh, looks like this. It's got uh, a magnitude, and then it's the product of four sine waves, sine kxx, sine kyy, and sine kzz times sine omega t. So uh, these kx, ky, and kz values are just the, um, the different indexed uh, wave vectors along the different, uh, wave numbers al uh, along the different spatial directions x, y, and z. So the possible values of kx, ky, and kz, again, if you think about just along um, one direction at a time, then, um, then kx, the possible values of kx are equal to nx times pi over a, which is just like the one-dimensional case. Okay, k is equal to uh, pi times n over a. Okay, and um, same for ky and kz. And omega here is related to the k to the k vectors uh, by something you have to basically do this uh, find the sum of the squares. So omega squared is equal to c squared times the sum of the squares of the different k values in the different directions. Okay, the different wave numbers in the different directions. Now, how do we find out how many of these modes exist in the cavity? Okay, how many of the modes? Uh, like how, how do we how do we enumerate them? Okay. Well, we have to sort of think about this in a little bit different way. We have to we have to kind of imagine that we have a, a different three-dimensional space, if you will, but the the axes of this space are not spatial coordinates, but they're k x they're k coordinates. They're the k x k y and k z. Okay. And you can imagine that a point in in this grid. So you have a three-dimensional grid, and there's uh, the the space is filled with points, and each point is a was a coordinate k x k y k z, and so if you think about it like that, then then we can um, we can start to enumerate the, the the number of modes. Okay, so here I've basically depicted what I just said. We have a three-dimensional grid of axes, a three-dimensional space with axes nx, ny, and nz, and there's a three-dimensional grid which corresponds to the different enumerated values of the different of each nx, uh, ny, and nz. Okay, so nx, ny, and nz uh, are what I've written down here, and these would correspond directly. A particular value of nx, ny, and nz would give you a particular kx, ky, and kz. And so a, any given n vector, okay, or a total n, would just be the vector which comes from the origin of this um, space to a point in the three-dimensional grid with coordinates nx, ny, and nz, okay. And obviously that would give you a particular combination of kx, ky, and kz, as I said. Now, it should be clear from looking at this that there are multiple um, uh, multiple um, vectors, n vectors of the same length. Okay, that is, there's multiple combinations of n x and y and n z, which give you the same uh, total length of this of this vector. So there, that when that what that means is that there are multiple values of omega of the frequency, which uh, uh, there are uh, multiple uh, ways to produce a particular frequency from different val from different uh, combinations of kx, ky, and kz. Okay, so this me this makes enumerating the um, the, uh, the the number of modes complicated. But when you use this kind of formalism, this kind of abstract idea, then it becomes reasonably straightforward. Basically, all we want to do then is calculate the volume of the sphere in this n space. Okay, and we not we want to divide that volume by eight because and the n's are, are constrained to be positive, um, and, and none of them can be negative.